and scary to think that I actually fell from there. Never thought it would be possible that I could fall. As soon as I hit the ground, it was an enormous amount of pain and I didn't know what to think. I remember just rolling back and forth and trying to tell myself, like, get up, Sarah, like, you can get up, you can get up. I got a phone call. I think he said, hi, Kim, uh, Sarah's been in an accident. My heart stops. I said, okay, what kind of an accident? They told us what had actually happened and how serious it was and that I'm gonna be transferred to uh, Toronto Western and that I'm gonna be with Dr. Failings and he's the best of the best. I have uh, operated on thousands of patients with spinal injuries and various spinal conditions. I would rate the complexity of Sarah's injuries uh, probably in the top five or ten that I've taken care of. I didn't really understand the full extent of it and how serious it was until I saw um, the MRIs and the CAT scans and the actual pictures of what had happened and what my bones looked like all crushed up. What was unusual about Sarah's case was that she had two fractures, both of which were incredibly serious, but she had a, a burst fracture of the L1 vertebra, which is really where the chest pivots on the lower spine, and there was an injury of her lower thoracic spinal cord. 90% of what we know about spinal cord injury has been learned in the last 20 years. Probably the game changer has been the development of uh, specialized implants in order to allow us to, to repair uh, a horrifically injured spine and we can be so confident in the stability of the spine that we can literally get patients mobilized imme almost immediately. The percentage for people that have had spinal cord injuries and being able to walk the day after their surgery is probably very slim. Like I can't even believe that I'm part of that percentage and I got lucky. I think she was pretty shocked when I got her up. I think within a day or two of the surgery, she was literally up and standing. I don't understand fully what they did to my back, but whatever it was, it, I'm so thankful for it and I'm so happy that it's helped me. What the surgery involves is an approach through the back of the spine and we expose the spine and then we remove the bone fragments and then we push the bone fragments away from the, from the nerve tissue. So then we have to reconstruct the spine. And then the way we do this, we use these specialized screws. And this is an example of a titanium polyaxial screw. This is made by uh, Depew Spine, um, which is a Johnson & Johnson company. And this is uh, really the, the use of pedicle screw instrumentation has literally revolutionized spine surgery. And in Sarah's case, I used mainly rigid screws and then two critical screws um, in pivot points were polyaxial. And what this allowed me to then do, I took two rods, and these are made out of uh, titanium so that they're MRI compatible. And then what this allowed us then to do was to really extremely securely stabilize the spine in such a way that you can then allow for a very rapid and pain-free mobilization. I'm so happy that I got the care that I did and I truly am thankful and I feel blessed and I'm so happy that I'm recovered so well. Spinal cord injury is um, one of the most expensive medical problems there, there is, so the costs are enormous. And you, it's the, you have the direct medical costs of the hospitalization, but those actually pale in comparison to the down the road costs. One of the opportunities that we have by doing the type of surgery that Sarah has had is we give an individual a second chance and we've suddenly uh, transformed someone who might have been in hospital for a year to a year and a half and then potentially might have required dependent care to a situation now where she has the opportunity to be completely independent. There's no question that critical investments in um, early injury treatment has huge payoffs down the road.
I'm super happy that I can be here standing and not be stuck up there in a wheelchair or be limited by anything. She's 20 and she wants to be like everybody else, but at the same time I'm afraid of what might happen if I don't watch her. Um, but I know she'll be okay. She is okay. I'm basically living life the way that I was before. Just a little bit more careful now. <laughs>